G'day guys, we've got a planetary motion question today where we've got Jupiter with mass and radius of 71,000 has many moons. The closest moon, Metis, has a mass of 9.56 times 10 to the 16 and a mean orbital radius of 1.28 times 10 to the 5. Metis has an average planetary radius of 21.5 kilometres. Okie dokie. So what we've got here is we've got two planets which are separated by a particular radius. Now what we're going to have to use to find the gravitational force of attraction between these two planets, or Jupiter and Metis, is we're going to have to use Newton's law of universal gravitation, which basically states that if we have two point objects or two point masses separated by a particular radius, the force of attraction between these two objects is going to be equal to some constant times the product of the two masses divided by the distance between them squared. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to use or apply this formula to part A of our question. So let's get straight to it. So this is called Newton's law of universal gravitation. So we've got the force of attraction between these two bodies is going to equal this constant, the gravitational, Newton's gravitational constant, is 6.67, 6 correct? Times 10 to the negative 11 times the mass of Jupiter, 1. 0.9 times 10 to the power of 27 times the mass of Metis, which is 9.56 times 10 to the 16, and we're all going to be dividing. We're going to be dividing that all by the radius between them, the radius between the two point masses, and that's going to be in meters. So as you can see the mean orbital radius here is in kilometers so we're gonna to have to times that by a thousand. So rather than be times 10 to the 5 it's going to be times 10 to the 8. So we're gonna have 1.28 times 10 to the power of 8 and that's all going to be squared. So we put <laughs> that into our calculators and we find that the force is equal to 7.39 times 10 to the power of 17 newtons. Cool. And because this is a vector quantity we have to write a direction so we can write toward each other. Cool. So let's get on to part B. So there are many methods that we can go about um, completing B. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the distance between these two planets stays approximately constant, i.e. Metis doesn't drift away from Jupiter or be attracted too much towards Jupiter so they actually collide. So as a result, the force of attraction which we calculated in A has to be equal to the force of centripetal acceleration that Metis has which is actually forcing it away from Jupiter. Okay, so what I'm going to do, there's going to be a little bit of derivation first so we can actually get a time that it takes. So I know what my uh, force of attraction is and so that's going to have to be equal to my force of centripetal acceleration. And I also know that my force of centripetal acceleration or FC is equal to mv squared divided by radius. Now, 
the way that I can calculate this uh, formula is I'm going to be able to, um, again, substitute out one of these variables that I don't know, and that is going to be our velocity squared. We don't know what velo the velocity of this planet is. However, we can calculate it using um, variables or information that we do have. So what I'm going to do is instead of writing velocity, I know that velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. Now, assuming that this uh, metis revolves in a circular direction, we're not going to go for an ellipse. Because we have a mean orbital radius, we're going to assume that it revol revolves around Jupiter in a circular pattern. We know that the distance is going to be the circumference of the circle that uh, Metis makes around Jupiter. So what we can do here is we can say, well, instead of writing S, we're going to write the circumference of a circle, or 2 pi r, and we'll just put it all over t. And what we're going to do then is we're going to substitute that in for velocity in this centripetal acceleration formula. So let me just change colour again. So we're going to have the force of centripetal acceleration is equal to m multiplied by 2 pi r over t squared all divided by r. Beautiful. So we'll do a little bit of um, simplification. I'm going to use the distributive law to m move that uh, index into the bracket. And so I'm going to be left with m multiplied by, I've got 2 squared pi squared r squared divided by t squared. And all of that is then divided by r. So, what's going to happen is one of the, this r here will cancel out with that r there, or the, the index of that r there. And what we're left with is we're left with m, or, well, 4m, pi squared r over t squared, and that's equal to the force of centripetal acceleration. Cool. Now, we know all these uh, values except for t squared, but that's what we're trying to find in v. So what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange this for t squared, so it's in terms of t. So I'm going to swap the t squared and the force of centripetal acceleration, so I'm left with t squared is equal to 4m pi squared r divided by fc. So therefore the equivalence of that is we're going to have t is equal to the square root of 4m pi squared r over the force of centripetal acceleration. Now, if we put in all of the values that we know, is this is going to be equal to the square root of 4 pi squared. I'll just rearrange a little bit. We've got the mass of the orbiting planet, Metis, which is 9.56. times 10 to the power of 16. Let me just rub out this R here. And then we have the radius, which is just 1.28 times 10 to the 8. 
and that's all going to be divided by the force, the centripetal acceleration, which is the number that we calculated in A. So 7.39 times 10 to the 17. So we can put this into our calculator and that is going to give us 25,560 seconds. Cool. However, it says what we need is we need it in hours. So you can do a little bit of maths and you can go, well, how many seconds are in an hour? We've got 60 seconds in a minute times 60 minutes in an hour. So we're simply going to divide this by 3,600. And that, guys, is going to be equal to 7.1 hours. Okay. So, this second part of the question, part B, is quite complicated. The reason it's complicated is it requires quite a advanced or a, a well thought out understanding of how all of the formulas which we use for planetary motion fit together. It also asks you to understand that if um, the planets aren't getting closer and closer together over time or further and further apart over time, the attractive force this way of the two planets has to be equal to the force that's going to be pushing the two planets apart. So they stay a mean orbital radius apart. So what we could do then is if we know what the force of attraction is between the two planets, we can equate that to the centripetal acceleration, which is, uh, or the centripetal force, which is generated from a circular motion. We can then equate that to what we know can derive centripetal force. We can then input, do a little bit of clever maths here and a little bit of clever algebra, and we come out with this number here. This question, the time that it takes Metis to orbit around Jupiter, there are, I would say, around two ways of doing this. You could solve it like this, or the other way to solve it, if I just make myself a bit of space, would be to use this formula here, the t squared divided by r cubed is equal to 4 pi squared over gm. Now, this one here is the mass of the central object. We've got the, and we're looking for, we'll be looking for this, the period. So, you know, you could use this formula here. I like this one here because it's, I don't know, I just really wasn't taught this in school. So we kind of had to sort of nut this one out and I'm kind of proud that I still know how to do it. So that's how you can do it one way. This way you can literally just enter in all the stuff that we know. We know what the mass of Jupiter is, the gravitational constant, the radius between the two, and we can just solve that quite simply. It's not complicated at all. So, you know, either or, if you're an exam, it might pay to do this one. But if you want to impress your teacher with how well you can substitute in between, you know, different equations, then you might want to use the bottom one. It's up to you. I hope the video helped, guys. You know, if it did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I do try and put out videos most of the time. Um, you know, it really helps me out. If, I, if you have any problems, don't hesitate to uh, give me a bell and let me know what they are, and I'll do my best to, you know, help you out if I can. But until next time, guys, enjoy yourselves.